لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أما بعد قال علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام اللهم صل على ضع فخرك ولا كبرك صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على the subject concerning the biography of Umm al banin is a subject that requires a thorough analysis and an examination. Umm al banin the mother of Abbas, the wife of Ali ibn Abi Talib, sallallahu wa sallam, wa alayhi. She was born on 4 AH and she passed away on the 13th of Jamad al-Akhar, 64 years after Hijra. She lived on this earth for 60 years. And she is a prominent figure within the religion of Islam. You see, many a times we are accused that women have been mistreated within the religion of Islam. When the Prophet came, Ma'adullah, women were mistreated. While on the contrary, we would not have such great personalities, such great role models, such as Bibi Fatima, such as Bibi Khadija, such as Umm al -Banin. She is a role model not only for the, for the women, but also for the men. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salam wa alayhi, was married to Fatima to Zahra. And Fatima to Zahra, she died and she left behind four orphans. Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Bibi Zainab and Umm Kulthum. When Bibi Fatima died, Umm Kulthum was only one and a half years old. Imagine a small daughter left by her mother. She was only one and a half years old. And Bibi Fatima said, Ya Ali, please marry Amama. After me, marry Amama. Imam Ali married Amama later on during his life. He married Asma bint Umais. <coughs> Before marrying Asma bint Umais, he made Khawla ibn Ja'far. From Khawla ibn Ja'far, he had a son by the name of Muhammad al Hanafiya. And then he married Asma bint Umais. Asma bint Umais was first married to Ja'far al Tayyar, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. And then she got married to Abu Bakr, Atiq ibn Abi Quhafa. You know, Abu Bakr. His real name is Atiq ibn Abi Quhafa. Abu Bakr is his kunniya. And then Imam Ali was looking for a lady whose ancestors were valiant warriors. Warriors with valor and bravery, but not reckless warriors. You see, many a times we may have someone strong, someone who can fight battles, but then they are reckless. They don't look at who they are killing. They kill innocent children, innocent women, innocent human beings. Imam Ali said, no. I want a woman whose ancestors are noble people, brave people, but not reckless people, not merciless people. So he went towards his brother Aqil. Aqil was a famous matchmaker. That is why in the community matchmakers are needed, specialists in making marriages, very important. So. Aqil was a matchmaker. Imam Ali, the Quran says in Surah 13, verse 43, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مُرْسَلَ قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Imam Ali has knowledge of the book. Further than that, in Wasa'il al-Shia, volume 18, hadith number 43, Prophet Muhammad on the day of Ghadir said, Ali, tafsiru kitab illa. Imam Ali is the tafsir of the book of Allah. But Imam Ali is going towards Aqil. Why? No, Imam Ali is trying to emphasize that these kinds of specialists are needed within the community. So he went towards Aqil and said, I'm looking for a lady whose ancestry is full of warriors. Aqil straight away said, let us go to Fatima bint Hizam al Kilabiya." Umm al -Banin's real name is not Umm al -Banin. That's her title. Her real name is Fatima bint Hizam al Kilabiya. So they went. And then Imam Ali said, before we go towards Umm al -Banin, please tell me his ancestry. Who were his ancestors? You said they are brave people. Can you give me examples? He said, let me begin with Al Mulahal. Al Mulahal would look for wild animals to fight with. 
You know, normally wild animals look after you. They run after you. He would run after wild animals and fight them. He would fight with lions. And then who else? Abu al-Barra, another ancestor of Umm al-Banin. Al-Mulahal, Abu al-Barra, etc. All of them, they belong to the ancestry of Umm al-Banin, brave warriors. They got married. Imam Ali and Umm al-Banin, they got married. Who read the nikah? Aqil. Aqil read the nikah of Imam Ali and Umm al-Banin. And Umm al-Banin would have become arrogant during this predicament. You know, after the Holy Prophet, who was the most important person on this earth? Imam Ali. He was the best human being after the Prophet. Umm al-Banin could have easily said, now I am married to Imam Ali, I can become arrogant to these children? No. As soon as she entered the house of Imam Ali, she said first, Call all the children of Fatima. All of them gathered. Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Umm Kulthum, Bibi Zainab. She looked towards them and she said, I have not come here to take Fatima's position. I am not here to snatch Fatima's position. No, I am not your mother, but I have come here as a servant. In Najul Balagha, Imam Ali says, saying number 398, Dua let go of your arrogance and put down your pride. Further than that, it's there within Biharul Anwar, volume 16, page 341, hadith number 33. It says, there's a narration from Imam Ali that whenever the Holy Prophet, whenever the Holy Prophet would praise himself, mention a merit of himself, he would say, Wala Fakhr, with no pride. Further than that, in Biharul Anwar, volume 78, page 229, hadith number 5. Imam Sadiq says, those people who are arrogant, they have put down their dignity. And therefore, Umm al banin and Imam Ali had four children. The first son, Abbas, born on the 26th year after Hijrah. Second, 36 year after Hijrah by the name of Abdullah. And then 38th year after Hijrah, Uthman. 40th year after Hijrah, they had a son by the name of Aun. And 40th year after Hijrah was the year where Imam Ali passed away. Now someone may ask the question, why did they name their son Abbas? What does Abbas mean? You see, a name reflects upon the character. If I name someone a certain name, it reflects on his character. It affects the character. Let me give you an example. Hindus in our, in our society, if they name their son Suraj, Suraj, what does it mean? Suraj means sun. Sun means that the person will shine. He will be a jolly good person. Sun means shine. And when you name someone Suraj, that person, you want him to become a jolly person. All the Christians, they will name their children Abraham. Why? They name him after the prophet Ibrahim, Abraham. The same way Abbas. What does Abbas mean? Abbas means the frowning one. That when he looks at the unjust people, he looks at the oppressors within the society, they start fearing Abbas. Abbas means the frowning one. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And someone may ask the question that why did Imam Ali name his son Uthman? Imam Ali's son, he has a son by the name of Omar and he has a son by the name of Uthman. Now, you tell me if there really was a problem, would he name his children after the caliphs? The answer is simple. Imam Ali was asked, why did you name your son Uthman? Imam Ali said, I did not name him Uthman after Uthman ibn Affan, the third Khalifa. No. I named him Uthman after Uthman ibn Mad'un. He was a companion of the Prophet, a man who never drank alcohol during the time of Jahiliyyah. Omar, why did he name him Omar? Omar after who? Omar ibn Mukrin, another Sahaba of Rasulullah. So, Uthman after Uthman ibn Mad'un, Omar after Omar ibn Mukrin. As soon as Hadrat Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salawatullahi wa salam wa alayhi As soon as he was born, the first person he saw, the first person he laid his eyes upon was Aba Abdullah Imam al-Hussein. And the last man that he saw when he left this earth 
was Imam al Hussein. On the 10th of Muharram, when Abbas lay on the grounds of Karbala, he called Imam Hussein Abu Abdullah, went towards him and said, Oh Hussein, oh my brother, oh Mawla, Ya Mawla, on one eye I have an arrow, on the other eye I have blood. If I had my hands with me, I would have removed them myself. I would have removed the blood myself. I would have removed the arrow myself. But unfortunately, I do not have hands. And therefore, Abba Abdullah removed the arrow and cleaned the blood of Hazrat Abbas. The first person Abbas saw was Abba Abdullah. The last man he saw was Abba Abdullah. The second one, when Abbas was born, Bibi Zainab took Abu Fadl and said, This is my brother, Abu Fadl. He will protect me when I will need protection. He will always be there to look after my hijab. The second person, Bibi Zainab. And Umul Balin, after the death of Abu Fadl Abbas, after the 10th of Muharram, she turned Jannatul Baqi into a Husayniya. In Syria, Bibi Zainab laid the foundations of Azadari, undoubtedly. In Medina, who laid the foundations of Azadari? Ummul Banin laid the foundations of Azadari. And therefore, we will all in solidarity say, Labbaik ya Abbas. Labbaik ya Abbas. Labbaik ya Abbas. Labbaik ya Abbas. Labbaik ya Zainab. Labbaik ya Zainab. We were just there in the shrine of Bibi Zainab, and we can't say how much we miss the shrine, how much we miss you, O Zainab. Labbaik ya Zainab. Labbaik ya Zainab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.